Hey guys, welcome back to Ollie's Zoo again. And today we're going to be taking a slight detour from the tour of the zoo room. We're going to be going back to snakes and going more into depth on how to keep them and just how awesome animals they are. Now we're back here with Alfred, our adult royal python, our adult male royal python at Ollie's Zoo. And uh, one uh, question that always uh, crops up quite often with uh, reptile keepers or people that are new to the hobby is is it a royal python or is it a ball python? Now, there's people who sit on the fence on both sides of this argument. I like to remain unbiased personally, but when you examine the evidence, look at the Latin name, Python Regius. Now, Regius is Latin for royal, which would indicate that the true name is Royal Python. But Royal Pythons have this uh, adaptation that they've developed, uh, this natural behaviour, to uh, instinctively ball up into uh, what looks like a rock or a ball whenever they feel threatened, as they are a very shy and placid snake, not typically aggressive. And I think that's where the nickname Ball Python comes from. One question that was sent in this week on our YouTube channel was from Louise McGaffin asking on our advice on how to keep royal pythons. Well, Louise, if you have a look here at Alfred's setup, you can see that the vivarium is terrestrial, there meaning that he lives on the ground rather than in the trees, like a carpet python or a boa constrictor would. And the vivarium is about three foot long in length roughly two foot in high and two and a half foot in width and at that end of the vivarium you can see the heat lamp there which provides the basking spot for Alfred and generally for a royal python you want it to be about 30 to 35 degrees underneath that basking spot don't worry too much they don't mind it going too hot in there but just make sure that they have a good enough hiding place that they can cool down into the other side of the tank and they can regulate their body temperature better the substrate that you can see there is a cork bark type substrate which is great for absorbing moisture and releasing it creating the humidity effect that they would naturally see in the wild they do come from central africa so they won't be used to slight rainfall throughout the day uh, feel free to make it look nice and pretty and naturalistic those vines that you can see there they were put in place in this tank when alfred was a young a young snake allowed to climb in them and exhibit his natural behaviours <coughs> and uh, with any animal make sure that they have fresh water every day. One of the things that really sells royal pythons to me as pets is how rarely they poo and this is because royal pythons typically store their faeces up inside their bodies sometimes for up to three months and uh, of course this is going to be highly beneficial uh, financially and one of the cheaper snakes to keep. Uh, some colubrids like corn snakes, milk snakes, you might need to be cleaning them every day. But with royal pythons, you'll find that you don't need to clean them that often, and they're therefore quite a low maintenance snake to keep. Of course, don't forget with royal pythons, you're not spoilt for choice on different morphs. There's some beautiful colour variations out there. Some are a bit more expensive than others, but they're so worth it when you see how gorgeous the markings are on their bodies. We're going to be looking at the second half of this video of Hognose Snakes again and we're back with our little friend Crash, there he is. And in the last Hognose Snake video we did briefly touch on the fact that they are, they are amphibian specialists and that they have rear fang venom glands. But this time we're going to be looking at some of the evolutionary adaptations that Hognose Snakes have developed to defend themselves. Now they are a part of the colubri family which includes your corn snakes, milk snakes, king snakes, that type of thing. And what you'll find with this type of snake is that when they feel threatened or excited sometimes as they're trying to ward off predators, what they'll do is they'll rattle their tail in leaf litter preferably and uh, to a bird like a stork or a heron or something like that or maybe even a large rodent like a badger. They uh, might mistake this animal for being much more dangerous for being a rattlesnake. So that's quite a clever way that this animal defends itself. Another way that hognose snakes defend themselves, and it sounds a bit stupid, sometimes they'll play dead. Now, 
this can sometimes be in the form of them just lying flat on their back with their heads tilted back. Sometimes they will voluntarily burst blood vessels at the back of their throat and this will obviously weep a little, weep a little bit of blood through their mouth giving the impression to predators that are preying on them that they're already dead. Now, unless the animal's a scavenger, it might be deterred from eating the hognose snake at this point. Well, I think that's gonna just about wrap it up for today. Truth be told is I could talk about snakes all day, guys, but there's only so much that we can cover in these videos. So we'll just leave it at that for today. And uh, from me and Crash, Thanks once again for all the subscriptions as of recent, the views are going up, the support is carrying on for these videos and we're so grateful for it, for being allowed to carry on doing these videos. Keep sending the questions in and I'll answer them and uh, we'll see you on the next video guys. Bye.